If you're shopping for aftermarket wheels, there's a dizzying array of choices and you can very easily sink into paralysis by analysis if you're not careful. So I'm here to make this easy for you. Close all those browser tabs and just buy a set of Envy Foundation wheels. Dollar for dollar, I just can't find anything better. Now before I launch into yet another glowing review, let's pause and talk about the question on everyone's mind. How are the foundations really different from Envy's premium wheels like my beloved ARs? For the sake of comparison, I'm gonna look at the numbers on the foundation 45s and 65s alongside the 3.4 and the 4.5 AR from Envy, as well as Zip's Firecrest and S Series 303. Now, I haven't ridden either of the new 303s yet, so my comparison will be strictly empirical on those, but I spent lots of time on the previous versions of the Firecrest 303, and I currently own a set of 4.5 ARs. And to be honest, I've owned basically everything Zip, Envy, Reynolds, Mavic, Fulcrum, and Canby have ever made, so I feel like I've got a good base to compare. I also rode the wheels on a handful of different bikes. My Cervelo R5, the Canyon Grail CF and AL, as well as the Pinarello Greville, and I've got them on a Turner Titanium Cyclosis right now. So bear with me here because this is gonna get nerdy. The Foundation 45s are 45 millimeters deep versus a front rear depth of 39 and 43 on the MV34s and 49 and 55 on the 45s. The Envy 5.6s are 54 and 63. The 303S is 45 millimeters deep, and the 303 Firecrest is 40 millimeters deep. And of course, they're tubeless, just like the foundations. If we look at the foundation 65s, they're more aligned with the Envy 5.6 and fall in between Zips 404 and 808. They're a bit too deep for my tastes, and I didn't get to test a pair, but on paper, the $1,600 foundation 65 wheel could possibly be the fastest wheel that Envy makes. The charts on Envy's site show a difference of only 1.78 more watts of aerodynamic drag than the SES 7.8, a number that's easily overcome by the improved, you guessed it, rolling resistance of tubeless tires. And I'm just gonna leave that right here. So if you don't believe me, go to Envy's site, look at the charts, read the graphs, crunch the numbers, and I think you'll come to the same conclusion. Now let's move on to the wheel I actually physically tested, the 45s. But first, I think it's important to dig a little deeper into the differences between the foundations and Envy's premium wheels. At a high level, you get the same carbon, you get Envy's patented molded spoke holes, which are more durable than drilled holes, and you get a really nice set of house brand hubs with NTN steel bearings. The premium wheels have NTN stainless steel bearings and a slightly lighter hub shell. Both versions have Supreme spokes, but the foundations have the slightly heavier CX Sprint instead of the CX Ray. The Sprints are more durable and stiffer, where the Rays are lighter, springier, and more aero. The Envy Foundation 45s weigh in at 1,541 grams versus 1,417 grams on the 34 AR and 1,525 grams on the Zip 303S. The new Firecrest 303 is a little bit lighter because it's also a little bit shallower at 40 millimeters. It comes in at 1,352 grams. But it's the internal and external rim widths that really separate the Foundation 45s from Envy's premium line. The 45s and 65s have an internal rim width of 21 millimeters and an external width of 28. The 3.4s and the 4.5s clock in at 25 and 32. Both have the wide hookless system for increased durability and ease of installation. But what this means is you can't really run anything smaller than a 28 on the AR series and that your tires are gonna balloon up about two to three millimeters on the ARs. For example, my 30C Vittoria is measured just over 32 on my four or five ARs, but the 28s I had on the foundation 45s measured true to size. It's not a huge thing, but if you prefer 25s and 28s because you're a pure road rider who sticks to the pavement, then the foundations might be the better choice. All right, well, that's been several minutes of boring tech specs and empirical data, and I'm sure what you really wanna know is how they ride and how I arrived at the conclusion I made in the intro. Close, Close all, those all those browser, browser tabs, tabs and just and buy a set of Indy Foundation, foundation wheels. wheels. 
As I said, I've clocked thousands of miles on just about every major wheel brand on the planet, and as a result, I kind of have a set of expectations when I throw something new on my bike. If I were to sum those expectations up in a word, it'd be balance. I want a wheel that's extremely responsive to input, with a hub that engages sharply. I want them to be easy to get up to speed and hold that speed without much pushback. And because I ride mostly deep wheels, I expect a bit of crosswind feedback, but I don't want so much that it compromises the handling of the bike. And you know, I want them to feel like a traditionally laced, hand-built bicycle wheel with a little compliance and rebound. I've also come to expect easy tubeless tire installation and removal so I can transform them from road to gravel mode in less than a half an hour. And until now, I've had the expectation that to get all that, I'd need to spend premium bucks on premium wheels. Cutting corners was not allowed. And I gotta be honest, if there was some way to subject myself to a blindfolded test of each set, I'd be very hard pressed to tell you which one is which. And I probably couldn't look you in the eyes and say, my $3,500 4.5s are measurably better than the $1,600 foundations. I mean, sure, if you look at the numbers and throw the premium wheels in the wind tunnel, they test better. The numbers don't lie. And this comes back to my echoing refrain of, if you're the type of guy who doesn't want to leave anything on the table, blah, 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 then sure, step up to the 3.4s or 4.5s and upgrade to the King Hubs just like I did. But if you're not going to lie awake at night wondering if the extra grand will get you to the top step of the podium, which it very well might, then I just can't make a case for the higher end wheels. The foundations, they're just that good. They check all my boxes and they're perfectly balanced. So balanced, in fact, that after a few months with the 45s, I just can't let them go. I bought this demo set for myself. I don't know if anybody wants to hear that or not, and I don't know if they're worried about cannibalizing sales of the high-end stuff. Who knows? Maybe they just looked around and figured out that a lot of guys like me have a road race bike and a gravel race bike, and now they can sell us, effectively, two wheel sets for the price of one. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel for notifications, and if you'd like to shop for your next set of Envies, please click the link in the description. I'd also like to hear what you have to say about this new generation of sub $2,000 carbon wheels and why you like them so much. So let me know in the comments below. Okay, see you next time.